Hello again my friends, ever since Bungie's info embargo lifted, the internet has been flooded with fresh details of Destiny's universe. This video is a comprehensive breakdown of everything new that's come to light, including a meticulous analysis of Destiny's Strike gameplay trailer. That's right my friends, it's time once again to talk about Destiny. start with Destiny's various game modes. You can explore Destiny's universe in multiple ways depending on the kind of activities you wish to engage in and you'll choose these activities using the director, the game's impressive menu driven guide to Destiny's numerous locations and it's from this menu you'll have a list of modes to choose from which will define your time on the ground. Let's have a look at each game mode. First up we have Patrol. Now Patrol missions are effectively open-ended free roam opportunities for Guardians who simply wish to explore Destiny's environments. Players touch down in a specific area and can do pretty much whatever they want. Search the landscape for treasure and easter eggs, take on mini tasks for the various factions that exist within the city, salvage some loot, join a public event, hop on a sparrow and go for a ride or simply sit by the edge of a ravine using one of the gestures mapped to the d-pad and take in the view. While you're on Patrol you can do as little or as much as you like. It's an undirected experience, perfect for Guardians who want to explore the universe at their own pace. Next up we have Campaign, which is a story driven experience. The campaign can be taken on solo or with a trusted fire team of three. Now unsurprisingly Bungie has remained extremely secretive about the game's story. Destiny is after all a mystery that will slowly unravel as Guardians explore the solar system. We know the game's overarching plot. Guardians must fight back the darkness and reclaim all that has been taken from us. Specific mission details have yet to be revealed and many questions remain unanswered. What exactly is the Traveller? Where did it come from and why did it share its powerful technology with us? Who are the Awoken and how did the Exo attain self-awareness? And let's not forget the motivations of the various alien races who wish to stamp out humanity. If the Vex are time travelling robots, someone must have built them. But who and for what purpose? Bungie said on numerous occasions that Destiny's mysteries are best left for the player to discover for themselves. Next up we have Strikes, which are three-man co-op missions that focus on combat. During a strike you'll need to complete multiple objectives before fighting a boss at the end. Typically, Strikes can take up to 30 minutes to complete. We'll talk more about Strikes at the end of the video. My pal and fellow YouTuber Datto delivers a painstaking analysis of the Bungie Strike gameplay trailer. You don't want to miss it. Next up we have Raids, which are truly hardcore co-op experiences that require planning, tactics and high level guardians if you hope to complete them. Raids are built for 6 players and Bungie refers to them as end game activities, something to take on once you've amassed plenty of experience, fully leveled your focuses and have a range of rare exotic gear to choose from. Raids will be where legends are born. To give you some idea of just how hardcore they are, Bungie has revealed that it can take up to 45 minutes just to crack the entrance of a raid. Now when you consider that an entire strike can be completed completed in 30 minutes, well, expect to die. A lot. And finally we have Skirmishes, Destiny's competitive play v player mode. Now interestingly, Bungie has revealed that you can't jump into competitive multiplayer as soon as you pop the disc in the drive. You have to unlock it, which is a first for a Bungie game. But why is this? Well according to Bungie it takes at least a few hours and a few campaign missions to unlock a super ability and a special weapon. Now if you were top into a skirmish without these, you'd have a pretty tough time of it. So when you do unlock PvP, which you should do after only a couple hours of play, you'll have a super ability, a special weapon and no doubt a decent grasp of how a guardian operates. In short, you'll be ready to take on other guardians. And when your first character unlocks PvP, it's automatically unlocked for all of the characters on your account. Bungie's confirmed that you can have a maximum of three characters on a single account, enough to master every guardian class. Now Bungie has also revealed that Destiny's competitive multiplayer will be playable at E3 so expect to learn a hell of a lot more info about this game mode in June. Now you can also expect to see an additional wealth of unique missions and varied playlists within both Destiny's campaign and competitive multiplayer and we know the public events will be graded based on how well you perform so if you're a true badass expect to receive gold tier achievements. So then, by using the director, Destiny aims to solve one of the problems that many traditional MMOs struggle with, letting players jump directly into the style of play they want. In short, the director is a clean and efficient way to present the multitude of game modes, activities and new features in an easy to read menu. The director will also display all your currently available planets and locations, as well as all of your accessible missions, and as players complete more tasks, the universe slowly opens up, offering fresh worlds and challenges, and the fact that the map looks like something out of Lord of the Rings is an aesthetic bonus. 
Now, Bungie is also developing a smartphone and tablet app that will reproduce the director's interface as a standalone service, allowing players to research new quests as well as set up co-op missions with friends, and they can do all this away from their console. Think of it as a portable gateway into Destiny's universe that you can tinker with at any time. Now, just in case you were wondering, all the named areas on Destiny's maps are connected, so for example, if you find yourself on Earth in Mothyard, you can traverse the entirety of the surrounding area or make your way up to King's Watch and beyond without in interruption. If you love seamless open-ended exploration, Destiny is looking very promising indeed. So then, with such wide expanses to explore, how will Guardians quickly cover ground? The answer is riding on a sparrow, Destiny's non-combat speed bikes. Now, there's been some confusion lately as to whether or not this vehicle is called a Sparrow or a Shrike. Bungie has, after all, been seen using both names. Well, let me clear this up. A Shrike is a specific model of Sparrow, which hints that there may be other models that Bungie has yet to reveal. Now, the red Sparrow you see here is a pre-order bonus. Let's talk about this in more detail. When you pre-order Destiny from Game in the UK or GameStop in the US, you'll be given access to a cool red Sparrow with better acceleration and higher top speed. But it's worth noting too that the unique red paint job is only exclusive until the 1st of January 2015, and that the Sparrow's better acceleration, higher top speed and higher durability plating can also be attained through gameplay, so really, this pre-order bonus is a timed exclusive. If you want the cool red paint job and higher stats before anyone else, it's worth getting, otherwise you're not really missing out on much. So then, we've talked about patrols, campaigns, strikes, raids, skirmishes and public events, not to mention the wealth of campaign side quests and the various game modes that have yet to be revealed in Destiny's competitive PvP. The amount of content packed into Destiny's universe is nothing short of staggering. And there's more. Bungie has also confirmed faction missions. Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I still get is about factions, specifically what purpose do factions serve? Well, I'm going to detail everything we know about them so far and shed some light on their role in Destiny's universe. There are five known factions, New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, Seven Seraphs, Osiris and Future War Cult, and you can customise your gear with your chosen faction emblems. Let's have a look at a few examples of this. Now here's the Condor F3, a fusion rifle with a Future War Cult emblem etched into the barrel, and here's a female warlock wielding that very same gun, and if you look closely you can also see the Future War Cult emblem on the side of a helmet. Now this gameplay footage shows a shotgun also decorated with the Future War Cult emblem. Not only is this weapon a lethal close call to Death Dealer, it also advertises your faction allegiance. A quick glance at your gun is all it takes to let other Guardians know that you side with future War Cult. And yes, you can even decorate your personal spaceship with your chosen faction emblem. In this case, it's Dead Orbit. So then, it's safe to assume that factions must play a significant role in Destiny's universe. Let's have a look at this role in more detail. Now, within Destiny's fiction, Guardians fight against one another in support of various competing factions in the city, and these skirmishes play out in contested arenas across the solar system. Guardians are employed by these factions, who were also integral to forming the city. So then, it appears the factions are tied into Destiny's competitive multiplayer and the overarching lore of Destiny's universe. They explain why Guardians fight one another in arenas across the solar system. This fascinating glimpse into the fiction of Destiny's factions shows that Bungie wants to tie every aspect of the game into its story. Competitive multiplayer isn't simply a standalone game mode, it has its own lore that is seamlessly integrated into Destiny's universe. And now we know about faction missions. Now, all five factions will be represented in the city and they'll give you assignments depending on your faction allegiance, but you can also pick up these missions on the fly when you're out exploring. You'll be alerted via communication spikes in the ground. Now, I'm guessing that these are some kind of audio beacons that notify you of nearby faction missions. Completing these missions will unlock rewards and help you understand the motivations of each faction and generally add yet another layer of richness to Destiny's universe. Now, while we're on the subject of factions, Bungie posted this picture in their latest weekly update. It shows Guardians gathered around a large table inside the tower. Faction banners hang from the ceiling. Now, Bungie calls the Guardians in this image mentors. This is the first time I've heard Guardians with this particular title and it raises a lot of questions. Are mentors only found in the tower? What exactly is their role? 
Now, their name suggests that they are some kind of counsellors. Perhaps they act as the city's war cabinet, advising guardians about missions and the dangers that lurk outside the city walls. And could mentors possibly be what Bungie used to call the Vanguard? Remember, Destiny is still in flux and name changes are still very much a possibility. I guess we'll know more come E3, where Bungie has promised they'll reveal more tower activities, as well as new beta info, the chance to play competitive multiplayer, and even a little more info about the game's story. Now, the tower is also home to your vault. While playing Destiny, you'll sometimes find gear that's beyond your character, and this is where the vault comes in. If you find a powerful weapon you want to keep for later, you can pop it in your vault and even trade it between the three characters on your account. Now, when asked whether items can then be traded between other guardians, Bungie said it's certainly an interesting idea and it's something we'll have to investigate. Personally, I'd love to see a legit trading system in the game. And when Guardians do try on new gear, you'll have the ability to zoom in and examine it in more detail. That way you'll be able to fully appreciate the intricate detail on this Hunter's Wolf engraved chest plate. Now, one of the most exciting new things I've heard about Destiny is that Bungie's building a world where something new happens every single day. Bungie's Chief Operating Officer Pete Parsons explains how this is going to work. He says, This is a real operation. We've got shifts that are working 12 hours a day, 7 days a week, and soon there'll be people operating our data center 24 hours a day, 7 days a week week and they'll never leave for the next 10 years. Bungie has a whole team of people who work shifts no matter what because that's the kind of world we're building. We have a programming chart which essentially says one thing. There's going to be something new to do every single day inside of Destiny from the moment players enter our world for the first time. Now let me just repeat that. Bungie has a team working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for the next 10 years to bring you daily content. Fuck. Unsurprisingly, Destiny is one of the most expensive video game development and publishing projects of all time. This level of devotion to provide players content post-launch from day one onwards and then every day for 10 years, well, it's almost inconceivable. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If we can get to 5,000 likes, that would be amazing and show me that you guys like these longer breakdown videos. Subscribe for more Destiny news and thanks for watching, you beautiful bastards. Here comes that mother chuff of a boom. Hello again my friends, really glad to see you made it beyond the boom. Now, during the intro to this video, I talked about a breakdown analysis of Destiny Strike gameplay demo. Well, if you click the image on the left, it will take you to that very video. It was made by my pal and fellow YouTuber, Datto Does Destiny. His video was featured on Kotaku and in Bungie's latest weekly update, which should give you an idea of just how good it is. Definitely worth watching if you haven't already done so. And while you're there, tell that beautiful bastard I said hi. Now, if you click the image on the right, it will take you to a video in which I talk about Destiny's gold tier grading system for completing public events. I briefly mentioned it in this video, but if you want an in-depth analysis, be sure to go check it out. And for mobile phone users, links to both of these videos can be found in the description box below. Now, I also wanted to say a huge thank you for your continued support. This channel has just passed 7 million views and 68,000 subscribers, which genuinely blows my mind. Whenever you guys interact with these videos by liking, commenting, and sharing, you help this channel grow and allow me to spend more time making longer breakdown videos like this one. Thank you so much for supporting my content. Now, I've also made a poll for you guys that I'd like you to vote in. The question I'd like you to answer is what game mode or activity are you most looking forward to in Destiny? The options are all the modes and activities that I covered in this video. Patrol, campaign, strikes, raids, skirmishes, faction missions and public events. There's a link to this poll in the description box below, so be sure to go vote. I may very well use the results in a future video. And guys, just so you know, there's a hell of a lot more Destiny info for me to break down, so stay tuned to this channel for a steady stream of Destiny videos. I'll do my best to keep you sane until the beta drops, which looks like it will be sometime in June. And one last thing before I go. I've hidden a beta access code in this video. If you want to redeem it, you'll need to be lightning quick as these things go super fast. Good luck. And as always, until next time, Guardians. <laughs>